Hello, what's up? What makes a species of animal, plant, or fungus or bacteria valuable for conservation? Why certain species have to be conserved? To conserve means to prevent the wasteful use of a resource. And also to protect something or someone from harm or destruction. First of all, species that already has a small population in the wild、uh, is valuable for conservation because they are more likely to go extinct due to human activities such as hunting and deforestation. The expansion of human activities would only cause their habitat to become smaller and smaller. And they would eventually lose all of their habitat if conservation actions weren't being applied. Now, reason number two is the decreasing population. The main difference between this and the first reason we talked about is that the decreasing population means a species that started out as a more popular species that has a higher number in its native habitat, and then. The population started to decrease sharply and making it smaller and smaller day by day, where this can eventually lead to extinction if protection methods weren't being applied. Reason number three is the specific habitat、uh, ecosystem or the conditions that a species need to survive. The more specific they are, the more valuable is it to conserve that species. For example. The giant panda is a large mammal that only feeds on certain species of bamboo in the wild, and they are also only native to a small area of mountainous forest that is in southwestern China, and they are also highly intolerant of hot weather. For example, the weathers that are lukewarm for humans could have been scorchingly hot to them. So the conditions that they need is really specific, and their livelihoods in the wild is、uh, extremely likely to get affected by the expansion of human settlements and climate change. When put into comparison, the original panda, also known as the little red panda, they can feed on bamboo, grasses, fruits, and occasionally meat, and they also have a lot. Larger or wider natural habitat, which means the conditions that they need to survive is a lot less specific. That means the giant panda has a higher chance of going extinct or being threatened in the wild. Reason number four is a species' importance in the food chain. For example, lions, tigers, and leopards are the apex predators of their ecosystems. And they keep the numbers of other large mammals in check. It, once they go extinct in the wild, the population of most of the species of large mammals could increase sharply, leading to the, the depletion of natural resources such as plant material and water. Those species would also get engaged in intense competition between each other, fighting for the access of limited resources. Reason number four is about the fossil history of certain life forms. The longer a life form, a species have existed on Earth, the more important it is to conserve them. For example, horseshoe crabs are not particularly rare. The conditions that they need is not particularly specific, which means they can be found in coastal regions from. In various parts of the Pacific Ocean, in even some parts of the Atlantic Ocean, but why is it so important to conserve them? Because they have existed for since the time before the dinosaurs started to appear, and they haven't changed a lot since then. And once they're gone, there would be hugely negative impacts on the ecosystem and biodiversity itself. The Araucaria trees from the South Atmosphere also need conservation. They have already coexisted with many prehistoric creatures, and in the wild, they are still providing food to many herbivorous animals. Reason number six is the slow growth rate of certain life forms. For example, the giant tortoise of Galapagos Islands are known for their longevity. 
Each individual has the potential to live over a hundred years, but that also means that the rate of their growth and their reproduction is really slow. That means once their numbers decrease sharply in the wild, it would take a lot of time and resources for their numbers to bounce back again. That means slow-growing, long-lived species in general are more likely to become a threatened or endangered species when compared to those that are fast-growing and short-lived. Now, reasons number seven are the ancient lineages that certain species of animals or plants has. For example, the tuatara is a species of reptile that is only found in certain parts of New Zealand, and they may look like lizards. But they're actually not closely related at all. They represent a ancient lineages of reptile that is more closely related to non-avian dinosaurs than any other reptiles that are still alive today. Another example would be that of the Wollemi tree, the Wollemia nobilis. It is a species of tree that is only native to a small region of rainforest in southwestern Australia. They were first being discovered as a fossil example. Up until the year 1994, when a scientist discovered a living specimen of this plant, and they also represent a really basal and ancient lineage of the Araucaria, the monkey puzzles family tree. And why is it so important for us to keep them alive? Is that once they became extinct, the entire lineage of those life forms could have been gone. Now, to sum up this video, wildlife have to be conserved in order to maintain a balanced ecosystem, and it's also a way to reduce the amount of harm that humans pose to the ecosystem or the natural world. And the best way to conserve wildlife so far. Is to keep them in their native habitat, to conserve them in the place that they came from, and out of habitat conservation should always be put as a secondary resort. It is always better to use it when the place of origins of those life forms were being damaged. And once again, thank you for watching. If you like this video, then please check out. A video that we did a long time ago, which talks about the difference between animal rights and wildlife conservation.